And it's great to see so many old and new friends here tonight. We're really pleased that you're here to help us launch the 60s Turned 50, a nine-month program by the Conservancy and our Volunteer Modern Committee. We're delighted to kick off this initiative with our partners at the National Trust for Historic Preservation, whose funding made this special evening possible. For their strong support and participation, I'd like to specifically thank Anthea Hartig and Christine Madrid French. And of course, we wouldn't be here at this fabulous architectural icon. Are you all happy to be here? Without the very gracious hospitality of our hosts, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Specifically, we'd like to thank, we'll have applause in just one second. Specifically, I can tell he's going to be good on that panel. Um, specifically, we want to thank the DWP General Manager, David Nahai, Winifred Yancey of the Governmental Affairs Office, T.C. Richard for his expert te technical assistance, and Chris Reinhardt of Public Affairs. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, we are deeply grateful to Councilwoman Jan Perry and Greg Fisher on her staff for their invaluable <coughs> assistance and friendship. So why are we here tonight talking about saving architecture of the 1960s? The Conservancy and our modern committee have been advocating for 1960s resources for decades. You might remember or have played a role in the fight to save the Cinerama Dome or efforts to protect the music center complex across the street, to name just a few. But now we approach an important milestone. Next year, resources built in 1960 will reach the ripe old age of 50. While this should generally ease the burden of landmarking these resources, Many people just don't understand how 60s buildings could possibly be considered historic. Probably none of you. We also must face head on the technical and philosophical issues of preserving modern resources and you'll hear a lot about that tonight. The Conservancy is fighting right now to save several buildings from the 60s. Given the sheer number of 60s buildings in greater Los Angeles, there will be many more advocacy issues to come. We need to start talking now about saving these structures before it's too late. So here we are tonight, boldly going where no preservation organization has gone before, at the beginning of a magical history tour through one of the most important eras in the growth of Los Angeles. And that reminds me, could you all please turn your phones off? Um, Tonight's discussion will help frame our conversations over the next nine months and for years to come, providing insight and guidance to our future advocacy efforts. In addition to this fabulous kickoff event, we have, today we also have launched our new website dedicated to the 60s turn 50. You can go on the site and vote on your favorite 60s building, explore an interactive timeline, share photos, Keep track of upcoming events, read about advocacy issues, and much more. Don't miss your chance to pick the top 60 of the 60s, a people's choice list of your favorite buildings. We're rolling out the voting in phases, starting with civic and industrial buildings, like the very one that we are in tonight. We also have tickets available for our November 8th tour. It's a mod, mod, mod city featuring 1960s gems from the South Bay, including the spectacular LAX theme building. Don't wait. Some of you know how quickly tonight sold out, so please buy your tickets early for this tour because we know that we will sell out. You can buy them in the lobby after the program or at laconservancy.org. And now, without further ado, I want to move on to our distinguished panel that we have here tonight. Since you already have their bios in the handout, I'll just introduce them briefly. We have Christine Madrid French, who is the Director of Modernism and the Recent Past Initiative for the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Alan Hess is an architect, architecture critic, architectural historian, and author. Leo Marmel is the Managing Principal of Marmel Radziner and Associates. 
David Martin is the design principal and co-chairman of AC Martin Partners, Inc. And Chris Nichols is an associate editor for Los Angeles Magazine and chair emeritus of the Conservancy's Modern Committee. And now I leave you in the capable hands of tonight's moderator. We're very fortunate to have with us a vital voice for the remarkable architecture and design of Los Angeles. She wears many hats, among them hosting KCRW's DNA Design and Architecture Program and serving as the LA editor for Dwell Magazine. And in a few short weeks, she will receive the distinguished honorary AIA award from the Los Angeles chapter. Please join me in welcoming Frances Anderton. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be here. As always at these kind of events, I feel very much in awe of the audience, which always tends to be more expert than me about the subject at hand. But in one of my other hats, as you probably know, I work with Warren Olney for, on To The Point in which we LA radio programs. And through him, I have learned how to fake it. And, <laughs> and, um, and just the importance of asking questions of very bright people and what an incredibly rewarding experience that can be. So um, I should add that I am a child of the 60s, born early in the 60s, so I'm heading towards that big number. But I grew up with these buildings. When I first came to LA, my love affair with the city started when I set eyes on the theme building. I live in a 1960s apartment, um, so I'm, I feel a kindred spirit with the topic. Um, but uh, academically and intellectually, it's also a very interesting one too, and that's what we're going to be looking at in the course of the evening. So just very quickly, I'm just going to give you an outline of what we're planning to do over the next hour and a half, which is we're going to start hearing from Alan. He's going to give us a sort of potted history of uh, 60s architecture in LA with the visual presentation, and then um, we'll move from there to a panel discussion, which will last for about 40 minutes between us, and then we're going to open the floor to questions. So. Um, There'll be plenty of time for questions, taking us through, I think, till about 9.30 or 10.45, 9.45. Um, and just to sort of set Alan off, I just wanted to just mention a couple of kind of scene setters, starting with um, a dinner that I went to last night, which was given by the um, new British consul. And she invited these uh, various people as associated with institu arts institutions in LA to come and tell her what was interesting about LA. she just got here. And as part of the conversation, I was enthusing about LA architecture and LA modern architecture, and I told her about the event that was happening tonight. Whereupon this guy, who's, who shall remain nameless, associated with a leading arts institution in this city, instantly said, why would we want to, pr um, to protect and preserve 60s architecture? It's horrible. So, <laughs> so yes, yes, yes. So anyway, that's um, one of the uh, themes I think we're going to address is, um, is public perception of 60s architecture and what co makes it beautiful to, to not everybody's eyes and how does, one, how does one address that perception problem having to do with, with 60s architecture. And then I guess the second sort of nice little uh, scene setter is I think probably many of us in this room watch Mad Men and remember this episode. In fact, Ken Bernstein, who's sitting there, reminded me of this very episode where Don Draper is having one of his three martini <coughs> lunches and mentions a trip to California. He doesn't say LA specifically, but I'm sure he means um, LA. And he talks about the new, how in LA everything's new and clean and people are optimistic and full of hope. And, he's, and he's, he's in the early 60s and he's talking about the buildings that we're now talking about now as being middle-aged or um, heading towards, towards 50. And, and, and I think one of the things that's so interesting is what does it mean now to be for this kind of stock that was, that was about newness and about cleanness and freshness to now be our heritage? And, 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 and so some of the questions we'll, we'll address is, has to do with that and, 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 and I think one of the things we'll get into is the issue of materials and the idea that these buildings that were about being new are now getting old and what, and what does that mean technically and, um, and uh, in terms of all the other related preservation issues. So Alan, I leave it now to you. Thank you. <laughs> 